Hi everyone, I'm Paolo Tarantino from Dena Faber Cancer Institute in Boston, and I'm so glad to be here at this unbelievable conference. We have seen in these days changes in practice across metastatic breast cancer subtypes. We had a plenary session presentation of Serena 6, which is a quite innovative phase three trial that looked at escalating endocrine treatment in the first line among patients that had ESR1 mutations appearing in the ctDNA. So the idea is that doing first line AI CDK4-6 inhibition, you monitor ctDNA, and if there is um, an ESR1 mutation appearing, you randomize to camisestron CDK or continuing AI CDK. And the camisestron arm led to a significant advantage in progression-free survival and improvement also in quality of life. So we have seen these data now published on the New England Journal of Medicine, and we do expect this to lead to an approval. Concomitantly, we also saw improvement in clinical practice for more aggressive subtypes of breast cancer. We had the presentation by Sarah Tolaney of two practice-changing trials. One is ASCENT-04. There is a phase three trial that looked at taking the ADC sasetuzumab boviticum plus pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy pembrolizumab as first line for pdl one positive metastatic triple negative breast cancer, one of the most aggressive diseases within breast oncology. And here we saw a significant advantage in progression-free survival, response rate, PFS, median PFS reached almost one year with SASI pembro. And I do think this also would lead to an early approval of SASI and, and, and using clinical practice in the front line, which hopefully will improve outcomes also in clinical practice. Finally, we saw actually this morning another presentation by Sarah Tolaney of Destiny Breast 09, another phase three trial conducted that take the token ADC, Trastuzumab, Deruxtic, and TDXD to the first line for her to positive metastatic breast cancer. So this trial, Destiny Breast 09, had three arms at the Clopatra arm, THP, the standard of care for the past 10 years. TDXD alone, for which we still don't have data, and then TDXD Pertuzuma, for which we saw data this morning. Well, TDXD Pertuzuma led to a median PFS of 40 months, 4-0, which was quite unprecedented in this population, and also 15% complete responses, and in general, safety profile consistent with what we knew with TDXD. And the Cleopatra arm instead had about 20 to 26 months PFS, which is much shorter, of course, of TDXD. So we do expect TDXD pertuzumab to become a new start of care, but of course we need biomarkers in order to tailor treatment with all of these treatment options. This is why I invite everybody to see also our work with HER2DX, RPPA, high sensitivity HER2, and all the new biomarkers that are coming to quantitate HER2 and which we're trying to validate. And so stay tuned for more updates on new biomarkers. Thank you.